All right, so it looks like we got a nice little package from Dr. Chris himself. This beautiful gold foil. It's so, so pleasing and nice. Ooh, magnet. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's great. Hope you can see that. Oh, that's so cool. Is this like a fridge magnet? Is it a fridge magnet? Like a Dr. Chris fridge magnet? That is really, really neat. What other amazing goodies in here? Ooh, what's this? Oh, I think I know what this is. Yeah, these are, so this is a 3D printed GPIO pin cover for the Pi, uh, Pi Storm 32. So this is what goes over the, the exposed pins on the backside. So when you put your 1200 keyboard down, it doesn't short out. Sweet, thank you, Chris, that's awesome. Is there anything else in here? Let me, let me stick my head in here. Is there cash? Is there like piles of cash, Chris, in here? No. That was cool. Uh, thank you so much. Love having this. I'll get these uh, plopped on there, of course. Fridge magnet slash business cards. <laughs> Look, they multiply. They just keep coming. They just keep coming. The computer will rule the world. Well, hello and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga program. And today, I've got something a little different-ish, sort of. Is that a word? Different-ish? So what I'm going to do today is show you how to use green screen footage to get yourself into your own animated video creations. What do you mean, Q? Well, Lightwave 3D has the most simplistic, basic video compositor in it, okay? And it's a thing that allows you to basically uh, overlay a, a video or an image on top of your 3D stuff in the background using either a built-in alpha image, which is like a black and white matte image that tells it where things can be and where things can't be. But it also has the classic like weatherman, you know, green screen background that you can key out or basically use the software to tell it to get rid of the green. And much like a, an Amiga Genlock works, you can put yourself on top of your video or your animation inside Lightwave. So that's kind of neat. So what I've done is I've gone onto the wonderful world of YouTube on my, on my PC, and I downloaded a video clip of a, of a person on a green screen because I don't actually have a green screen. I can't make one for you, everybody here. Sorry about that. So I found some footage. And the great thing about YouTube is that you can download different resolutions. And one of the things YouTube has is you can download a, a nice Amiga friendly resolution of like 240p. So like a horizontal pixel is 240. So I grabbed this. And then in After Effects on my Windows side, I exported the, the video as, as JPEG frames. So that now here we are in lovely Amiga land and we can look at the wonderful YouTube video clip as frames. And as you can see, it's the amazing, very talented Shia LaBeouf. No, 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 no! As seen in Transformers movies and Holes and Fury, which was a great World War II tank movie. You should watch it if you haven't seen it. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use this as my example and you can see the green there. And what we'll do is go ahead and fire up Lightwave. And of course, you know, I've already got a scene prepped for this, but I'm gonna go through and explain what I did. So let's go ahead and find this green screen fun. We'll load that up. So what's happening now is you've got your basic Lightwave scene. I've loaded in an object here, just a nice 3D uh, ball of the earth. And then in this, this weird background black dots you're seeing, that's because I have a background image loaded and I have over in layout view, background image preview. So whatever image you have loaded in the background, you're gonna see through the camera and light wave. So if you go to like one of the other views, right, you're not gonna see that background. But if you go back to the camera view, you'll see that background. Well, what is that background? If we go to the compositing tab, so here's that compositing tab I was talking about. It's nebula.iff, right? So I'm just putting this nebula.iff in the background. And then I have this object here, which is called graphic earth. And then what you're gonna notice here in our simple compositing tab in Lightwave, foreground image, GS footage sequence. And what that is, that's that footage that I just showed you of Shia LaBeouf against the green screen. And if you go over here, you'll see it selected here under images. 
it says GS footage sequence, okay? Now you're not gonna have any information about this until you actually do a render. So see how this is blank and this is blank. So one of the things you gotta do is you're gonna have to press F9 so that you can actually see what the heck is going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And there you go. There is Shia LaBeouf uh, just, just standing in front of the globe doing what he does. Isn't that great? So how did we get this? When I last showed this to you, the Shia LaBeouf character here, he was around, he was surrounded by green. You can still see some green here. It's not perfect, but you know, keep in mind, this is like 35 years old, right? So we got some simple green spill here. How we do this in Lightwave is you go back to the effects compositing panel, you've got an option here. Now, if you have an alpha, remember I said alpha is like a black and white image that's like a cookie cutter. So you could go in here and, and you, let's say you loaded every single frame from this, okay? This is 100 frames, folks. You could go into like Deluxe Paint and you could trace him for 100 frames, each frame, and just fill him in as like white. And then the background is black, right? You could do that for every single frame. Save that out as another sequence. And then you would go over here where it says FG Alpha Image. You would use that sequence, okay? And then boom, you're done. You'd have a nice clean Shia LaBeouf as clean as you made it in, in deluxe paint. So that's that's one way to do it, but that's not what I'm showing you here because that's very tedious. The point of this is that if you shoot against green screen or blue screen or any solid color, really, as long as it's bright and evenly lit, you can come in here and use Lightwave's foreground key option. And this is where you basically tell it what is the lowest value of color I can pick. So you can see here, I've done like a dark, dark, dark green. What's the high eclipse? This is the most important one. You have to try and match the color that you're trying to key out or trying to erase. You have to try and get as close as possible. And unfortunately, there's no color picker here. So what you have to do is a lot of back and forth, a lot of setting these values, pressing F9 and seeing if it works. For example, let's go here. This says 69, right? Let me bump this up to like, I don't know, 113. So it was 69, yeah, 69. Now let's bump it up to 113, press F9. Well, nothing much has changed. Well, that's good. That means that's not so important. Well, let's take it down below 69. Let's go down to like, I don't know, 720. Let's go to 20 and press F9. Uh-oh, something's happening. We're actually like losing Shia. Now he's just like his face. So what's happened is we've lowered that, that value for the low color that we're starting to grab other colors besides the green in, his, uh, in, the, in the image here of Shia. So you gotta be careful with that. So we'll go back up, but this is what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be going back and forth, back and forth, finding those colors. Now, like I said, the most critical one though is the high clip color. Now this is a bunch of things, 90, two, well, actually let's just go ahead and make that, keep this simple, 90, 255, and we'll make this 50, right? Let's make sure I didn't break anything. Nope, it looks pretty good. So when you go here, so let's, let's mess with the high color. Let's take this down to like uh, from 255 to like, Ooh, I don't know, 151. Let's see what happens now. Oh, all the green came back. So see what I mean now? That's what you're trying to get rid of. You're trying to erase this green by adjusting this key option that's in here, this high clip color. And this is the one you want to do first. The low clip color, you can kind of get away with just by picking something close and just dropping it way down like we've done. But the high clip color is the one that you're going to be going back and forth, back and forth with the most. But eventually you can get yourself, so if you shot yourself on green screen, you had some footage um, of whatever, you put your dog or cat on green screen. Then you can just load that in and, and it's basically gonna put it on top of whatever is in your 3D render here. So, well, let's, you know, of course I've, I've already done that. So let's go ahead and go to view tech and we'll load it up and let's go find that animation. So I made the animation. Here it is, green screen anim. Isn't that a wonderful, isn't that the most amazing looking thing you've ever seen? So yeah, you've got your 3D animated light wave globe in the background, you've got your nebula in the deep background, and then you've got your uh, cookie cut or green screen pulled Shia LaBeouf just flexing in front of planet Earth there. Look at that, Arr! So that could be you or whatever you want, but it's a fun, neat little kind of low overhead way to get stuff like this into your uh, Amiga creation. So if you know if there's if you don't want to spend time doing a complicated 3D character animation for example, or if you're not you know if you don't have the ability to do amazing 2D animation characters, you could simply just videotape yourself, videotape, you could film yourself uh, against a green screen or other solid color 
and you could basically be your own your own character. You could do what you want you want your animated character to do. In this case, he's uh, flexing in front of the uh, camera. Uh, but one of the neat things is because this Amiga stuff is you know kind of like pixel art. You can adjust the resolution using Art Department Professional. You could pixelize the footage to make it even more, you know, quote unquote, 8-bit looking if you wanted. There's all kinds of fun things you can do. So you don't need to be a character animator or a 2D character animator to get animated people or items into your, into your creations. And this is one way you can do it, is using the screen screen footage. And again, if you really want to be patient and trace every single frame in a program like Deluxe Paint and create that black and white cookie cutter, then you don't even have to worry about the key and worry about that kind of subtle green fringing you're seeing in the background. So I hope that's uh, you know something that's fun and neat, another little fun light wave tip. Uh, I really enjoy bringing in footage and dropping it in the foreground. It's it's one of those things where like you can create a background in light wave of like cool uh, alien space terrain, but then in the foreground, instead of rendering an expensive, you know, takes way too long to render a uh, cockpit, right? You can just find cockpit footage and from like on, on YouTube, or even if you got some movie that you like, you can go find that footage and use it as an image sequence and use it in the foreground and do this, this simple compositing in Lightwave. And now you have your Lightwave rendered 3D background, but in the foreground, you've got this like crazy, super high res looking cockpit, right? And like, oh my gosh, how did you render that? Well, you didn't, you just, you just found it online and, you know, cut out the window so we can see what's behind it using uh, the green or, um, or you just go into deluxe paint. And like I said, you can do the black and white cookie masks where you can use this FG alpha image right here. So those are the two ways to do it. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'm done with this video.